Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Fit Fam. This is Miss Natural Olympia, Hillary. Thanks. <laughs> and this is Doug, the formulator. And uh, we're excited to be here today to talk about uh, one of my favorite subjects on the planet. Data. Data. <laughs> Data. But before we get into that. <laughs> yeah, before we get in that, into that, don't forget to like and subscribe um, and hit the bell to make sure you get notifications every time we have a new episode coming out. Um, like what you like. Oops. And if you don't like it, just get out of here. Just move on. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, so I, this... This is one of the things that has been really important to me. And every time um, I've tried to level up or even go and be with other people that are accomplishing things greater, whether it be in sport or business or life or family or anything, um, it seems like those people are ones that are more focused on data than I was. And I'm like, gosh, I got to level up. I've got to level up. And it's just one of those things that um, I think if you're wanting to really be successful at anything, getting numbers. Data. Yeah. Can, I, what do we mean by data? Like, Yeah, I think it's tracking. It's the ability right. to track your progress um, is what data is uh, or see where you're falling short. Yeah. And numbers are huge. Doug and I were just talking about that before we started. You know, when you're talking about collecting data, uh, the numbers are, I think, number one, almost in any area you're trying to, uh, you know, save money or store money to be able to do something with it. Uh, I like that word. Instead, uh, you you show how much you're saying, right? You You're monitoring numbers. Yeah. Um, and then of course, in blood work, you're looking at the numbers, yeah. uh, your body fat numbers. So numbers are super, super important with data, but also secondary to numbers are pictures. Absolutely. And we'll get into that as far as what, what things we can have as far as data numbers and data pictures, especially in the area of health. Mm -hmm. That's not our focus, but there's a couple kind of cool quotes about data. Uh, one of them was, without data, you're blind and deaf, and it's like being in the middle of a freeway. And I so like think about that. being blind and deaf, being in the middle of the freeway, just not knowing what to do and everything coming at you. And I think it's great, but with data, you, you know where you're at, you know what's going on, and um, then you can really create the game plan. And there's another one that said, uh, it's a little bit more uh, funny, it says, in God we trust, all others use data. <laughs> so, so basically, I've trusted God, but you better have data if you're, if you're working on it. And I think that that's really the key. And and so many times we run across people that jokingly say, "I don't want to know. I yeah. don't want to know my body fat. I don't want to know yeah. if my risk for cancer or disease, or you know, I don't even want to know what's in my bank account as long as I got enough to pay the bills." And it's just absolutely crazy to me um, because the data sets you free. It doesn't you know, actually cause problems and, you know, cause you to like cower in that, it really should do the opposite. Oh, this is where I'm at. Now I can have a game plan. Because you can change the trajectory. You can change the trajectory. Well, and I, I would say that I've been guilty of that in different areas as well. Like now nah, I'd rather just not know. I'd rather just kind of, you know, live in no man's land, which is the worst place to live. Uh, but so today we're going to go over all kinds of data, uh, but Today, we just happened to get our DEXA body scans done. We did. We did. And so we're going to go through those in detail. When it comes to health, optimal health, let's maybe go over each of the areas that we feel it's important for people to have data, data on. And um, I think everyone should have data on in these areas and then track it over time. But then we're going to get to what we did today and about the importance of what we learned from the DEXA scan and how cool it is. So first one is kind of... The specialty, and that's blood, right? We talked right. a lot about blood. Because it's the life force, right? It's the life force, and it's the ever-changing. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people, get your DNA test, do all these things. There's a lot of things you should do one time, right? But the blood, like you said, is the life force, and you want to measure it consistently. So we recommend getting blood data a minimum of twice a year mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. And I can't tell you how many people have saved themselves from serious disease and being able to fix things before it got crazy serious just because they stuck to getting data twice a year and caught things way ahead of time. Right, right. And and so I think twice a year is perfection. And for most Americans, uh, most people, that's going to be fabulous, right? Um, for those people that are striving for um, athletic performance in different areas, uh, 
three to four times a year is even more ideal because you're trying to monitor all of the specific numbers, right? With with me, we're really trying to keep a good balance of hormones so that yep. we can build as much muscle as possible. Um, and yet... And do it naturally, yeah. Yeah, it's, and still do it naturally. Um, but also, like, what are we doing too much of that is making, you know, those hormones fall and right. not... Not recovering. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, it's important when we talk about athletes, the great thing about us is Hillary is an athlete and I just want to be athletic for a longevity standpoint. And I think everyone should be athletic and I think everyone should treat themselves like an athlete personally. So when Hillary talks about getting blood work three or four times a year, in all reality, um, doing it at least every four months is is what we should do and have that athletic mindset, you know, like just being athletic. And it's really cool right now. The Olympics are going on and just oh, having that athletic yes. mindset so inspiring and you don't have to be an athlete but you should all be athletic. And so the blood, which goes with that urine. Right, yeah, that type urine thing. analysis, yep. And then really, uh, besides the pictures, like you're talking about, pictures of the lungs, different things that you need to get once in a while that's right. going on. Right. Um, the visual, you right. know, just even pictures. Right. Right. And how close fit, that's data. Yeah, oh, that's true. We use yeah. that a lot with people. Yeah. Like, oh, Absolutely. you have to have all these numbers. No, you can, you can have yeah. your clothes, your pants, that's yeah. data. Right. Yeah. There's times if, if my pants don't fit over my thighs, that's a real good thing. <laughs> that's, that's good. Another, I like it. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and so there's a lot of ways to get data is our point. Uh, but what's interesting that there's a whole bunch of data points and uh, metrics that you can gather from something called a DEXA scan. And that's what we did today. And we're going to focus on uh, today and hopefully at the end you're committed to actually find one and do it but uh, also to show that the statistics that the world gives you on what happens as you age is what the the norm is out there what's happening out there not the way it should be or it's what could happen yeah yeah I'm sure like if, like if you, if you follow the normal sad yeah diet and else. <clears throat> i do want to apologize ahead of time because i do feel like i'm gonna gloat one or two times during this podcast. You can tell we're competitive. <laughs> and so <laughs> and that's the fun, fun part of it. So, okay. so let's start. So what a DEXA scan is, um, a DEXA body scan is where there's a machine that you lay in and it does this low level x-ray and, and it goes across your body. So you're laying in it and it goes across your body. It's just a little like wand that goes back and forth. And it measures um, your tissue in your body from bone tissue, fat tissue, the water, um, muscle. simple to muscle. And so with all that information, it, you can use data points to get a whole bunch, extrapolate a whole bunch of, of information uh, about your body from how many calories your body burns, all this cool stuff. So we'll go through it. But um, it's really, really neat to see that. And so we're going to go through our tests right now. And, uh, but I want to give a few statistics, okay, a few statistics for You that. want to give statistics? <laughs> I'm shook. And so here's a few statistics that I think is important to understand as we go through um, our test. And we did it before to talk about. Oh, yeah. Okay. So after. we have, uh, the first time that we did a, a DEXA body scan was in August of 2019. And we had them come to the office and then we did it um, a couple of times after that. We also had them come back to the office. So. Um, Although you may have gotten yours done separate than I did at one of these times or I did or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't have your newest on here. Okay. Um, anyways, and so... Um, That's your thing. So, oh, you okay. don't have October. Okay. Anyways, so back in 2019 is when we had it done the first, so five years ago. And it was actually done in August, yeah. which is cool. So almost exactly five years. And so here's what happens normally um, in America with our age group since 2019, right? So for the 40 age group um, to the 50 age group, that on average, when you look up, just you can Google it, you can see the basic research studies. I have one pulled up here that says women lose on average a half a pound of muscle every year starting around the age of 40. So at 44, right, you should have lost two to three pounds of muscle Right. Since your last scan, and that would be the norm. Yeah. So my body scan five years ago, I was 38 years old. And lean tissue, we were at... Um, so muscle. Muscle. We were at 106 pounds of lean muscle. And then this year, we were at 
109.9 pounds of lean muscle. So you've actually reversed. Instead of losing four pounds, three to four pounds of muscle, you gained. Three right. Four pounds. So except eight pounds except we also, from there, um, with fat tissue, we changed the fat tissue amount as well. And so in all reality, it's a 5.3 pound increase in lean tissue. So that's that's going more than double, right? The opposite way. In the opposite. And just showing that why this typical America and women, in this case, they're losing muscle. And remember, muscle burns so many more calories than fat. We know muscle now, if you go back to one of our previous podcasts, we talk about myokines. We know that muscle now is actually part of the endocrine system and secretes chemicals to keep you happy, to have you not go crazy, to be able to give you uh, the energy and the vitality and to be more present. Like the list goes on and on and on. We know how important muscle is when before we thought it was just this thing to keep, you know, your bones uh, in in the right order and not cause issues and all that stuff. It's so much more now. It's a huge part of your health. And so for Hillary to go from supposedly going to be losing three to four pounds to gaining five pounds, that swing, that nine, 10 pound swing just shows what's possible. And so basically she improved her health, her endocrine balance, hormonal balance, um, strength, mindset, chemicals, age-related um, um, cell health. And she's done it as she ages. And a lot of it is due just to strength training. Well, a lot of it is due to strength training. I would definitely attribute it, a, a majority of it to that. Um, but also as we look at total body fat composition, we were at 22.2% uh, with the body DEXA scan. And uh, this year, just now, today, we're at 16.3%. So uh, body fat coming down and muscle uh, going up is is the ultimate goal for someone like me, especially when I'm trying to step on stage. And what was really great for me today is that I've been in this a uh, little bit of a funk thinking nothing's ever changing. Every, I'm always the same every time, you know, every year and there's no more muscle growth. So this for me was, was really important and really great for the mindset, especially hitting at this point in time when we have the last push Get ready. for shows. Yeah. And, and I think that's important to hear what Hillary's saying right now, because working with doctors around the nation and clients, we see one of two things happening mentally. We see people that think they're doing better than they are. And the data is like, holy cow, I I have been cheating a little bit thinking it wasn't that big a deal. And I've been a little bit lazier than, you know, really I thought I was being. Um, and it it kicks them into gear. Or in Hiller's case, you, she has this body dysmorphia thing a little bit going like, that's not changing as much as I want and do all this. And then getting the test, like, oh my gosh, it really is paying off. Well, and, and I so think that's really cool. Like we talked about, you know, everybody's looking for the magic, you know, the magic in body transformation or in fitness. And there is the magic pill because the magic pill is consistency. It's just consistency because no one is further than perfect than myself from my plan, where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but I will say I'm great at consistency. You know, I'm, I'm in the gym you know, trying each day and, and at least trying with that nutrition and, and, and waking up and going back at it each day. You know, there's never a day where it's like all of a sudden, like, Oh, nope, today I give up. Uh, you know, I might feel like I should have given more, but thank goodness I woke up again today and I get to give it another shot. So I think consistency <laughs> over anything else is the magic pill. And that's what something like Dexy scan does. It's going to show you so consistency cool. and what it does for you. Um, for someone like me, being a little bit older, you know, in the, in the little bit upper 50s. Um, the almost 60s, I think they call that. No, it's <laughs> upper 50s. But anyways, um, the, the thing is, is that most men my age are losing a tremendous amount of muscle. And um, now that, you know, 60 is not too far around the corner. Right. The number one factor for death after the age of 60 is man minus heart disease is falling, fractures. And right. So bone density and the muscle to be able to keep your gait and to know where you're at in space and have the strength to know where you're at and to move is critical. And uh, it's really not something that's supposed to happen. It happens because people don't work out, don't put pressure on the bone so the muscle, you know, the bone doesn't get stronger and the muscle isn't building. They're not doing the work. And so 
the key to understand is there's people in their 80s and 90s that are still lifting good heavy weights and doing things, but it's the consistency over time. Yeah. And I kind of want to brag on you for a second, because especially, you know, as we talk about your age, this is pretty remarkable. Um, when back five years ago, your lean tissue was 100 and are 120.8 pounds and today you're at 130.8 pounds that's pretty incredible uh, it, it is it was even a little bit eye-opening to me to gain 10 pounds of muscle when most people are losing you know guys my age are losing less and and talk about the mindset issue though in my mind i'm like wow i thought i was in shape killing it then yeah and now i'm Same. older and gained more I was a wimp back then. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, oh, stay. I kind of did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, comparatively, I am doing a lot more and stuff now and it's the consistency is paying off, but it just makes me look back at me. And I like, wish I would have kicked it in. That yeah. Much. Let's look at your body fat. Here As we well. Go. Here's so three I just said a little bit of bloating here. Okay. So, so 21 and a half back in 2019. And right now it's showing you at 18.2%, which I think it's important to <laughs> point out that average for your age group is 27.9%. So that is an extreme athletic uh, number. Um, Let's point out what body fat we're talking about, because one of the problems with body fat, and body fat is my favorite data point there right. is. Like I, I'll spend time showing thousands of studies of why you should get your body fat in an optimal range, okay, from any aspect. If you want to prove any aspect of health, get your body fat where it belongs. And that area of your health will improve cognitive function, strength, energy, whatever it is you want to improve, get your body fat under control and it'll improve um, insulin levels, blood glucose, insulin sensitivity, everything. So anyways, um, we're big on body fat, but depending on what test you do, it gives different numbers and it can be a little bit confusing because yeah. in the Olympic world, the bodybuilding world, uh, working with the teams would use calipers. And the goal with the calipers for women is, you know, to, to get 15 to 17% for good optimal health. Um, to get on stage, Hiller needs to be, you know, 7, 8, 9% from the calipers. And so when you do a DEXA scan, usually it's about 6% higher than what you would get from calipers. So again, just real for clarity, I think the two best things to do for body fat is a DEXA scan and body fat calipers three point and just know that there should be about a a, a six percent difference mm -hmm. there right so in my case coming in at 18 it was exactly because with calipers is right around 11 12 right? right and in your case you came in at you were 22 back in 19 and you were still competing and now it's 16 and that is about right because with calipers right around 10 percent right so but what is average mm. for uh my age group is 39.5 percent that's what's so crazy. well i just want to i i just want to make that distinction um well and and the average is not good right right 39.5 right. is not where you want to be for a woman and so you got me beat on body fat that was a gloating. Yes, that was, I beat him I, I was on that at point. that point. But I will so, say he gained more muscle than I did in the last five years. So, and so good for you for that. So fat percentage and muscle. But let's let's go back to um, uh, the not just the fat overall, but visceral. Visceral fat. So that is the fat that is around your organs, and that is the tricky fat, right? Most damaging. Fat. Yeah, and you'll see people. Um, the person that had the highest body fat of anyone that I've ever tested was someone who's anorexic. And so you wouldn't think they were high body Interesting. fat, but they had no muscle. And so the fat around your organs is more important than the dimple fat that you'll right. see, right? right. It usually it correlates pretty well. Yeah. But to do a DEXA scan, you actually get the exact number um, pounds of visceral fat, the fat around the kidneys, the liver and all that. And you want to shoot for it to be under one. That's the goal. If it's anything, um, I think for women they say under two. Under two. Yeah. And for for men, um, honestly, if you look at the data, anything under three is great. But it's just this one number, one to two, is really the key. And yours is remarkable because it's 0.35. Right? Yeah. So there's very little visceral fat in the body, and that's really important. And mine went from 2.5 to 1.5, so I still even have a little bit more work uh, to do in that area. But what was interesting, really I was looking good. at the average 
um, it ranges up to 10 pounds, like seven to 10 okay, pounds of visceral yeah. fat. And that is so damaging because it's not just putting pressure on the organs, it's releasing chemicals uh, in the body that actually age your cells. And so this visceral fat is something that oh, I think that's, is really I think that's really good. Say that again. That the visceral fat, the fat around the organs, um, puts pressure on the organs, right? And that's what everyone talks about. But really the key now that we've learned is the secretion of chemicals that are harmful to the cells of so the body. So it's almost like your visceral fat is making your body feel older and more run down than it actually is. True. Yeah. And it's even making it go that way. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what DEXA scan does is measure amount of muscle, the amount of fat, both full body fat and visceral fat, which is important, right? Mm -hmm. And what else? Well, so then it also, and we won't go through these, but then it gives you, you know, where that uh, lean muscle mass was made or not made. And so it, it shows you for your trunk, you know, so the neck, chest, abdomen, pelvic, that's your trunk. Um, and then it goes through the Android, which is, uh, pelvis area yeah, yeah. hips um, booty yeah well isn't that and, and then the guideline yeah that's more hips booty hips right? and upper thighs yeah, yeah 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 so it goes through and it kind of gives you lets you know where where you've gained the muscle where you've gained the fat which is really really cool information especially considering any time in your trunk um what is that statistic yeah for, for every inch of uh, body fat you gain in the abdominal region it increases your risk of disease over 15 percent. so basically the simple measurement is measuring your hips at the largest point and your waist at the smallest point and you want at least a one-to-one -one ratio and hopefully even uh, larger in the hips and so we know that the that area is really important and it measures specifically the fat in that area on a DEXA scan. Yeah, so DEXA scan is so, so cool when it comes to lean uh, tissue and then also body fat and visceral fat. Um, but what's really cool is also you get your bone density done, uh, which is so awesome. Uh, th the thing, honestly, that I'm proudest of on my scan is my bone density. Mm -hmm. Because as you age, it's almost like this, no, as you age, your bone density goes down. It's like not especially even. It's like not even this question, especially for women. It's just like that's just what happens. Well, so as we look at my bone density through the years, back in 2019, in August, we were at 2.7, and now we're at 3.3 percent. And what we're talking about is something called a T score, T dash score, and a T score is a rating given to you that tells you your bone density. And if it's minus 2.5 or more, so it's negative 2.5 or a higher number, so lower. Uh, bone density, then you have osteoporosis. And that's a major problem, right? The bone's really porous. Um, from minus one to minus 2.5, something called osteopenia. And that's when it's like, yeah, you, you're at risk of fracture, but it's not quite osteoporosis. So you want a higher number than that. And even getting, you know, from a minus one to a zero is good, but then anything in a positive number is great. So when Hillary talks about her score being 3.3, and before it was what? 2.7. 2.7. She's actually increasing bone density. That's and so freaking that's cool. That's really, really cool. And remember, we talked about as you age, the risk of dying from falling in a fracture increases exponentially, meaning it becomes actual number one risk factor for low quality of life and death as you age. So your T-score is something that you want to learn and know. And so if you keep up your calcium levels, your vitamin D levels back to the blood, uh -huh. right? And your strength training. Yeah, so your strength training, but not, I feel like for myself, something that's that's definitely increased, while I do feel like strength in the gym has probably increased, I feel like my intensity in my HIT training has also increased. So I feel like the, uh, I don't know that you want to use the word pounding on the on the bones, but it's also increased from that yeah, it's, as it's, well. It's a consistent pressure. And right. so remember the studies with the tennis players and that, where they showed um, that, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's a true factor when it comes to not just muscle, we hear about all the time, but bone, that if your muscles are not putting pressure on the bone, the body says, hey, we have this calcium, we can use it over here for nerves and for different factors in the body to help deliver nutrients and all these other things that calcium can be used for. Super cool. And it will use it there because it's like, well, they obviously don't need more bone strength because there's no pressure being put on the bone. But if you put pressure on the bone, you strengthen your muscles, you do your cardio, then the body's like, oh heck, we got to keep up with this. And so we're going to send the calcium, the vitamin D in there to be able to build the bone, the osteoclasts and the osteoblasts that do that job. And I think that's really critical is your body will respond 
to its environment. And right. if your environment is one of an athletic environment, then it's going to respond that way, as yours did, uh, with the bone density. And that's an area that's important to me. And yours also. was right about the same. <laughs> So through the last five years, which is which is great for me because yeah. anything positive like that, a 2.0. And so now that the scan gets your body fat, visceral fat, muscle, bone, it can separate all that and do a measurement uh, based on the algorithm of how many calories yeah. fat burns muscle and give you um, your RMR. Your yeah, resting your resting metabolic rate, yeah, which is awesome. It's basically the calories that you need to just live in a day right if you laid in bed uh, all day yeah if you laid in bed all day these are the calories that you would burn so i'm really excited with mine and you should be pretty excited we're not too far off from one another um i'm sitting right at 1450 which is a good number thinking that then with her exercise and everything through the day um to be able to come in and say, okay, calories, if she was trying to really, you know, not worry about losing extra body fat and that, to be able to have a 2,000 calorie diet and stuff's probably, um, you know, beneficial. But she know that you know that, you know, going down and getting between 18 to 1,600, then that's your cutting diet to be able to get right. for sure or reduce body fat if that's your goal. Um, and, and yours is right at 1,650. So we're, you know, we can be eating right about the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's cool to know too is, is as a couple or even family, um, to know about what it should be and you know the typical american diet if you keep it around 1800 to 2000 calories you're going to be a right about there and um we'll talk in future episodes about the importance of uh counting calories more in macros we're we're spending a lot of time and a lot of money to be able to make that easier for people and when we have it perfected we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more <laughs> so the dexa scan also is there anything I, else that um, no, I think we kind of, we, we hit everything on there. Um, I also want to point out that uh, the super seminar is coming up in September. Get your tickets, come. You're going to love it. It's going to be amazing. September 26th uh, through 29th at the Rio Hotel in Vegas. Yeah. And yeah. we are going to do our best to get a DEXA body scan there. Yeah. That would be really cool for people to be able to um, have that test along with all the other tools and coolest, newest uh, things in the fitness arena. Yeah. So it's about 15 minutes to test really quick. And, it's actually uh, the test itself only takes about six minutes and then they go over the numbers with you. So yeah, yeah absolutely. really quick. And that's uh, really, we, we actually had a van come up from Phoenix. We're about two and a half hours from Phoenix uh, and we had a van come up to it's here today and we had our entire staff offered it to them to do and a few other people, some of the competitors and stuff that you and Nevaeh and people work with um, did it. So it's just here all day. They do about 30 people and then they'll go back. And so even in a small rural town like us there's things you can do to have access to these things yeah. you know get a, some people together and, and call and order one of the different decks of body scan uh, vans to come up uh, sometimes they're actually their centers in the big cities that you can go to to look up dexa scan so I highly recommend you doing that it's not something you have to do all the time um like i said there was a five-year gap that's probably a little long some people do it you know every year or so we have one client that does it like every he month mess around. he's like where am i at i'm and tracking this thing absolutely which is great data, get, getting the data and um would recommend that and it, i i like that you brought up the super seminar because all what we're trying to do with the super seminar is provide an opportunity for everyone to be able to get the data get the information uh, the inspiration to be able to improve their health and yeah. so having like dexa there having the blood work type uh programs there having some great thought leaders people that just get your mind right right like we talked about with david Meltzer, yeah. ben hardy and, and forrest griffin and all them is really critical so if you can come join us at the super seminar just go to ohssuperseminar.com the link will be down below but ohssuperseminar.com and you also get to watch hillary Nevaeh and others compete at the USA Championships that same weekend right there. And so it'll be really cool. It will be really fun. So as always, this is Doug the Formulator. And Miss Natural Olympia Hillary. Take care. Keep chewing. Do your body fat. Stay consistent. <laughs>